Well, hello once again, and welcome to the uh, Book of John class here Thursday nights. We have a new addition. We have uh, Bob and Ruthie, mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to be joining Bill and Beverly in teaching the Book of John. And so we're going to have a little bit of an interaction between the four of them as they share from God's Word and share the Book of John. Uh, there's uh, several announcements that we want to do. Uh, uh, first of all, we'll, we'll tell you about... Uh, a fundraiser and an awareness raiser we're doing. It's called the Crosswalk, and I'm going to be carrying the Cross of Christ from Bend to Redmond starting at 8 in the morning on September 10th and 24th, and those are Saturday mornings along Highway 97. And we're doing it to raise pledges and to raise money for a trip we're taking to New Zealand. And uh, we're going to be going to Christchurch, and we're taking a um, we're taking a Steve and Ronnie Campbell of Prineville who are very gifted musicians, and we're going to take also Dean Braxton, who has a story to tell, an amazing story to tell, about being dead for an hour and 45 minutes, but yet God still healed him from 29 conditions and brought him back to life. And Dean has an amazing story to tell. Uh, Christ Church has experienced a lot of death and destruction because of the earthquakes, so we want to go down there with the story of, of hope and healing, and that there is life after death, and that there is truth to the promise that Jesus says you do not have to fear and so we're going to take a message to New Zealand and Christchurch about that so the crosswalks are coming up uh, the 10th and 24th of September and then we're also going to have a couple concerts uh, one in Prineville and one possibly in Redmond we're still setting the dates and times uh, to raise money for airfare for Ronna Lee and Steve Campbell and also Adriana Henry and myself to go to uh, to visit New Zealand. Uh, there's a lot going on here at uh, Vision Vision Ministries. Uh, thank you for being uh, watching and being online, being a part of it. And um, as things come up and we roll ministries out, we'll let you know. But um, what we what we want to do, the Book of Ephesians talks about unity in the body of Christ. And what we encourage you to do is, if you're going to a church, stay there. Uh, if you're happy there, please stay there. But there's a lot of outreach ministry that we're going to be doing here, and we would love for you to be a part of it. Uh, and you can still stay at your local church and yet be a part of community outreach. Uh, we also have a Sunday morning service at 9 a.m. that usually is taught by Bill Hewitt. And if you don't have a church or you want to come by and visit or watch online, then you're, you're free to do that as well. So, Bill, I'll give it to you, and you can introduce your friends, and we can okay. start taking, teaching about the book of John. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Ruthie and Bob, they're good friends of ours, and uh, I just look at that camera right there and I guess very briefly say, uh, you know, you visit convalescent homes and prison background and all. We're so thankful to be here today and, and to just to be here to study with Bill and and uh, and just to, just to be part of this. It's a part of uh, this Ephesians ministry is, is a part of everybody working together for the kingdom of God. And I'm so thankful uh, in our ministry we have we work at the we have an assisted living and a care center that we help, uh, have a Bible study on Wednesdays. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing now that we're retired. And, and uh, we're just so thankful that God's opened that door that we can do that. And that we're always open to help others. It's always a pleasure to be with Bill and Beverly and, and study the Word of God together. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. And um, I just want to say hello to all the people out there that's, that's watching. Uh, I understand that the audience is getting uh, bigger and bigger, and, and all the people in, in Northern California that I've been hearing about that's watching, uh, uh, we say hello to you and and uh, Mexico and United States and Canada and all the people overseas that are watching. And some people in Siberia are watching, is that right? Uh, it's what it looks like, yeah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Welcome okay. to them. Welcome to the Book of John class. Okay, our uh, intentions here uh, in our prayers is to teach the Book of John in, in such a way that you will be motivated to start little groups, maybe in your home or in your church, where you can disciple people to uh, help them to grow and to get, because uh, we, uh, as a group here, cannot be all over the world. So if you're in some uh, 
place uh, in Africa or someplace, and, and you want to start a book of John with 10 or 15 people, and God's moving you to, to, to do that, then we're praying that you can disciple other people and get them to grow and get them to study the book of John too. Uh, that's where I look at it like we are to help each other grow and, uh, and to be uh, more uh, involved in, in, in discipling people, not just to read the book and say, well, that was good, and then close it, but to really, really get into it and read it over and over and over. And uh, so uh, the book of John, uh, Ruthie, is very good for, for new Christians, isn't it? Yes, it is. I always have, whenever we've led people to the Lord, that's the first book. I said, don't start in the begin, in the first of the New Testament, or don't start on the Old Testament. Go right to the book of John. It'll give you everything that you need, but it'll also Amen. tell you the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I like that. Did you hear that, folks? The character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, in the book of John, there's certain things that pop up at you. Uh, and that is that if you've seen Jesus, you see the Father. You see, you want to know the character of the Father? Look at Jesus, you know. Because he says very plainly, uh, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. So I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So what I will do is I will pick up in chapter 14 by going backwards. As you know, if you follow this particular class, you know I, I go backwards, which is what they call rabbit trails where you go back and you pick something up, then you go forward and you pick something up. In other words, you have to read the book of John almost every day to want to know where I'm going. You know what I mean? So in chapter 14, we're going to go back to chapter 13. And remember in chapter 13, verse 38, and Jesus answered him. He's talking to Peter. Will you lay down your life for me? Now this is when Peter said that he would lay down his life for, for the Lord, you know. And uh, Jesus says, will you lay down uh, your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall crow, should not crow till you have denied me three times. And right after that, can you imagine how Peter must have felt? How he must have felt uh, very, very discouraged. Uh, very heartbroken. And what does Jesus say in, in chapter 14? Now, we look at this as chapters, which it is, but from 13 on, there's this continuous pr conversation in 13, 14, 15, and 16, where he's talking about this person called the Holy Spirit, which the disciples did not know who this was. He's saying he's going to leave them and go to the Father. And they're not quite sure when he leaves, will he come back or what's going on? And they're scared. They've been walking with him for three and a half years and uh, they, they, they're completely confused. And they're not quite sure about the whole thing about the Son of Man being lifted up. and. They're not quite sure about the resurrection on, on the third day, even though they're hearing this. It's very, very scary, scary for them. And uh, who's the Father? How do we get to know Him? Uh, and there's a lot of stuff in this particular chapter, which I don't think we're going to get finished tonight. But after talking to Peter, Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Did you ever stop to think that he's saying, believe in the both of us? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. if you believe in God, believe in both of us or believe in us. Yes. The Father and I are one. If you have faith in God, have faith in me. And, uh, you know, and you notice he says, you know, uh, he says to have faith in if you have faith in God, uh, believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would not have told you so. Now, he goes on to say, I prepare a place for you. Jesus is going personally 
to prepare a place. He's talking about a place that he's been to and came from, my father's house. He's, he's not saying uh, that, uh, I'm not quite sure where it's at. He's no. saying, this is my father's house. And did you ever stop to think, uh, I was sharing this with a gentleman I met the other day, he came to the house for some reason, and uh, um, it says, in my father's house. And I asked the people, what, you, what is the house? And they were kind of, you know, stuck for a second. I said, it's the whole universe. Now, in my father's house are many mansions. Can you imagine? Because we think of a mansion as being real big. Yes. But there are many mansions in his father's house. And he's saying, uh, don't be worried. Don't be afraid. And he's saying, I am going to go and prepare a place for you. If you guys want to jump in there, just you know, raise your hand and, and say something, okay? Yes. And uh, my study helps. It says Manson Mansions literally means a dwelling place. A better translation is room, converting to the idea that there is ample space in heaven for all who come to Jesus as Savior. Amen. Praise God. There's lots of room in heaven. And uh, I always like to take the flip side. There's lots of room in hell, too, but you don't want to go there. That's no. right. No. That's why hell was made larger. They enlarged hell, make it bigger. But we have a choice, Ruthie, mm -hmm. as you know, that we can choose. We can, And I, I need to correct myself. Uh, uh, you wasn't here last week, so you don't have to take any blame <laughs> for this. It's my fault. I'm talking about myself. I was saying to people out there, there's people out there that may, may, may not know how to say the sinner's prayer. And I've said it probably enough times in this teaching. And the other week I just said, just simply say yes to Jesus. You know, in desperation, mm -hmm. in case of some guy out there having a cup of coffee and he doesn't know what to do. And I said, now just say yes to Jesus and then get involved with the church, read your Bible, uh, get involved with the people that can help you. And on the way home, my lovely wife, Beverly, pointed out that it's more to it than just saying yes. It's repenting. Yes. It's confessing your sins. And I said, you know, i got to correct that <laughs> real quick. So if you're one of those persons out there who just said yes, you got to do something with that, right, Ruthie? Yes. you got to walk the walk. Yeah, yes. And you really have to not just cry and be say you're sorry that means with a repentant heart that means your heart you you will give up those things and yet you'll turn your life back around and give it to Jesus and you press in in other words it's not just being sorry no. it's repenting and going the opposite the way. opposite direction you know you just can't say uh, well I'm sorry for doing this it, it's actually uh, repenting yes. and changing direction Hey, repenting you. also means to stop doing the sin Right. It means to stop doing yes. the sin. Amen. Right. It means to stop. In case I, you didn't hear what our pastor said. <laughs> I know uh, when I was uh, in, the, in, the, in the prison uh, teaching the Word of God, made that clarify, I would tell little stories because they wouldn't know what's the difference between repentance and feeling sorry or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't want to get off on some rabbit trail, but... Uh, Basically, it's about the guy who's a, a farmer, and he's in the backyard in the barn, and he's praying to God. He says, God, would you forgive me for uh, stealing three bales of hay from my next-door neighbor? And he, and he goes to get up and says, would you forgive me for five, because I'm going back tonight for the other two that I forgot to get. <laughs> so that's not true repentance. No. The minister's back to the <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you got to have true repentance. Yes, right. you know? And uh, so anyway, so let not your hearts be troubled. You, do you have old King James? Well, new King no, James. No, I don't. What, what, what I can you have? NIV. Oh, NIV. Okay, that's going to be different. New King James. NIV. That's a non-inspired version, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, it's a good Bible. Anyway, um, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would not have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am ye may be also. So we're going to be there uh, where Jesus is. And he goes on to say, And where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Now there's three guys in this uh, Bible story that starts asking questions. One is Thomas, the other one is Philip, and the other one over here is uh, Judas. Not Judas Iscariot, but another Judas. So Thomas is asking, where are you going? Uh, Philip is asking, show us the Father, yeah. and it would be, it would be sufficient for us. And uh, Judas is more or less saying, well, who's the Holy Spirit? I mean, uh, how come you don't show him to the world? Well, why, why just to us? You know? So there's a lot of things in this chapter which is really, really uh, gets in pretty deep. Okay, now, um, Jesus said, I go to a pale place for you, which we just said. And uh, Thomas said to him, Lord, um, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Or, this Bible says, except through me. So he is the the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, I don't want to get off in too much of a rabbit trail, but if you've been watching this class for a number of months, you notice that when he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, this is why they want to pick up stones at him way back here in his other verses, because he was saying, I'm all three doors to, to the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. You know, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. The gates in the tabernacle named right. way, truth, and life. Right. Now we're going to take a big rabbit trail, and Ruthie and Bob, uh, you just jump in on this rabbit trail, okay? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to explain how uh, there's people out there <clears throat> that may say, well, I don't believe in this rapture business. But you do believe he's coming back. So um, we do know that Jesus is coming back. So mm -hmm. we're going to try to separate the two things. And yet at the same time, we're going to say that the rapture has absolutely taken place already in some situations. It's been tested and tried. It's been tested and tried. So Beverly, with the loudest voice, because your voice is like mine, it's kind of quiet and low. You talk about the first one in, in Genesis, okay? Okay, Genesis 5, 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So that means... God took him home with him, and he wasn't walking the earth anymore. And Nobody he, saw him after that. He didn't die. He didn't die. He didn't die. He did not die. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want the next one? Sure, and, and elaborate on it. And you guys uh, elaborate on it too, please. In 2 Kings 2.11, Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So that was a whirlwind that took Elijah up. He did not die. die. He didn't die. He did not die. And number can, three. Can I say something right there? Sure. On that one right there. This is water, by the way. <laughs> of course uh, it's water. That whirlwind of fire, um, you, you probably know about this, but you know the Holy Spirit keeps overturning nuggets and nuggets. Remember on the day of Pentecost? Mm -hmm. the, uh, wind came down as a cloven tongue yeah. as a fire, fire. Mm -hmm. and I got to thinking about that fire and there's fire again with the horses and the chariots mm -hmm. yeah. well, anyway um, he went up in this whirlwind yes. and disappeared okay it's the second rapture right that's the second one mm -hmm. the third one is Acts 1 9 now when he had spoken these things while they watched he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and that's Jesus it's Jesus himself. Yeah. So, and let me add, it's not, not written there, but uh, there was two men standing there and said, you men of Galilee, why are you staring up? Okay. The same Jesus 
will come back in the clouds. Yeah. Now, I just want to point out, there was two men in white apparel. It doesn't say it was two angels no. that was in the tomb. I know some commentaries say it might have been the two angels at the tomb. Another commentary in another Bible will say, which commentaries are written by men, they say, no, it wasn't angels, it was just two men that eventually went up too. Mm -hmm. But there's a distinction between the two angels where Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and then the, these men here in the book of Acts are two men, men. that are dressed in white. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, the fourth one in 2 Corinthians 12, 1. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to vi visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And that was John himself. That was Paul. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we all have trouble with names here. Do you have anything to add to that about Paul going up? No, that's good. Okay. Okay. 5 Revelation 4 1. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. So that was John. So that's John. Now we're getting into the actual 6 and 7, which is in the same verses. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Do you have anything to add? No, I'm just... We're, we're supposed to comfort one another with yeah. these words. Okay. Well, it is a comfort to know that the Lord's going to come back and change uh, the things on this earth and going to rule and reign here on earth. But, but you know... And, and the promise, too, that whether we're dead or alive, we are going to be caught up. Oh, yeah. You know, if we're buried, that's okay, too, because we're going up first. That's right. And then those that are alive and remain will be caught away. So we have that assurity in Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus. Amen. That's right. Whether we're dead or alive. That's, that's right. right. That's you know, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if you got a ch chance to look at any of these programs or not, but we were uh, discussing that Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pointed out uh, just on the spur of the moment, uh, Pastor Dave said here, and we were talking, and it just popped in my mind. Uh, Lazarus was dead, but he was one of his sheep. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Mm -hmm. And even though he was dead, he heard the voice of God. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So that's been tested. That's yes. been tested. <laughs> So uh, these, this last uh, Thess First Thessalonians 4, verse 16, 17, and 18, this is a 6 and 7, so that is a number of completion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that those, this last uh, rapture, we're going to be part of that. We're going to be going up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And whether we're dead or alive, alive. we're going to be part That's of that. That's right. Amen. <laughs> now, we're going to try to move on, except to say... Uh, I know there's uh, people out there wondering about this, and uh, and I don't want to open up a can of worms because I did this in a church one time, and people just, you know, you t when you say something, to people, their mouth drops open, and uh, they're not quite sure, you know, wh where you're at. And when I said this one time, several people went home. They they looked it up and said, Bill, you are right. Well, it's not me being right, it's the Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning was the second day. So there, when God called the firmament heaven, that's your first heaven. Yeah. You know, so the second heaven would be over here in Ephesians, and that would be in chapter 6. It's Ephesians, but in the uh, uh, New Testament over here. And in chapter 6, verse 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts in wickedness in heavenly places. So there is the second heaven, which is the atmosphere, which is over and above where the birds and stuff like that fly. Mm -hmm. It's out there in space. That's where you have the principalities, powers, mights, and dominions. Now also, we have over here in Corinthians, Paul very clearly saying that he was caught up into the third heaven. And that would be uh, in Second Corinthians, um, chapter 12. And that's what you just read, Beverly. It says uh, in, in check, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to vision and revelation of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up into the third heaven. So that, there you have your third heaven. And when Paul is saying, and uh, Bob and Ruthie, if you want to jump in on this, when he says he knew a man, he was talking about himself when he was stoned to death 14 years back yeah. in time. And a lot of people, theologians, believe that he was dead. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know. And anyway, meanwhile, getting back to the book of John, how's that for a rabbit trail? That's good. <laughs> okay, getting back to John, chapter um, 6, let me re-elaborate on that. Jesus did say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come unto the Father but by me. We pointed out in previous teachings that Jesus never said, I have a light. He said, I am the light. He never said, I have bread. He said, I am bread. He never said, I know a way to get to heaven. He says, I am the way. So it's not <clears throat> my opinion, it's what Jesus said. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come unto the Father but by me. When uh, Ruthie and Bob, when you talk to people and... Uh, and they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And, and the lights kind of go on in their, in their head and they accept Jesus. And they realize that they're born again. Um, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? It is. Amen. You know, you see the, the change in them too. You know, when they really uh, grasp hold that, that, what, that, that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, that he really is a real being. And that he's that he's actually living in them. Their whole countenance just changes. You know, your circumstances might not change around you, but your inside changes because he comes and dwells in us, and he changes us, and he gives us that hope. And we always know he's there for us. And that's what I see in them, and that's what's so thrilling. No matter whether it's at the convalescent host home and they're 90, 92 accepting the Lord. Uh, or if it's a younger person, it doesn't matter. That hope, that just shines in their face. It just, just something inside beams out. Because mm -hmm. it's the, actually the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. It's beaming out to others. Amen. Praise God. And you've seen a lot, a lot of that too, haven't you, Bob? Yeah, amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, I haven't went to convalescent homes as, as much as uh, you guys are doing right now. I mean, you, you're doing it all the time. But I remember the one time I was there, uh, and of course you probably have a thousand stories, but they asked me to get up there and uh, preach a 15 minute sermon because it was on a time schedule, which I don't like time schedules. But it brought all the people in in wheelchairs and stuff like that. So I preached a sermon and this one lady was, was snoring real loud with her eyes closed. And I knew she was asleep. So I figured, well, you can't, can't win them all, you know. So I just preached, <clears throat> got it all done, <clears throat> and I, I closed the service out. And, uh, you know, this is not true, but <laughs> she lifted her head up. She says, that's the best sermon I've ever heard, you know. <laughs> and I looked out, and I was shocked because she was snoring. And then she says, how do you get Jesus in your heart? And all of a sudden, I was uncontrollable. It was tears coming out of my eyes. 
So I walked over and I, I kneeled down on my hands and knees and I said, I don't know why I said this, I said, how old are you? She said, 89. And I thought of the awesome, uh, well, how can I say it, uh, um, privilege to be at that place at that time. Amen. We went through the sinner's prayer, and uh, I thought, my Lord, if I, w if I didn't say this little sermon that she thought was so great, and here I'm thinking that she's sleeping. I was so wrong. You must have seen a lot of that yeah. stuff, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Do. How do you handle that when somebody accepts the Lord? I just the Lord? believe their ears are open, all of them can hear. And, and that they're hearing no matter what, whether you sleep or what, your subconscious is, is tuned in. And that's what we do to those that are, are even in the beds that are in there and uh, come to the service and you'll think, well, they're not hearing anything. And then sometimes they'll start singing. When you're singing, they'll start singing the song, they have their eyes closed, because the eyes doesn't mean anything. Their heart, their, their, their spiritual ears are opened. And that's mm -hmm. what we're just so thankful for, because their ears are open. Yes. Praise yes. God. You know what we forgot to do? Huh. We forgot to open up in prayer. Well, I know, I was trying to tell you, but you weren't listening. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Well, let's start off in prayer. God forgive us, you know. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you yes, for the opportunity yes. to be here. Lord, we, we cannot do this without you. Yes. And here we are, in, in, not quite in the middle of it, but Lord, we just got so excited talking about you, and we just ask for your presence and yes, for the Holy Lord. Spirit to fall upon this room and everybody yes. out there watching. Amen. Lord, we pray for all the families, yes, our Lord. families and their families and all the families out there, all over the place, Lord, yes, Lord. that uh, people will rise up and in these last times that we're living in and get themselves right with God and accept yes. Jesus Christ as their personal yes, Savior. Lord. In yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And uh, we are living in interesting times. So, so here we are in verse 7. If you have known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Boy, isn't that a powerful statement. We're, we're back in John chapter 14. Yes. Yeah. John 14. I know where you're at, but I'm looking on yours. Oh, you are? <laughs> okay. I didn't change my Bible page. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go back to that. And I covered the three heavens and the five raptures and the other two, in which would be seven. And I probably have some people out there mad at me already. <laughs> but there is going to be a, a, a rapture, you know. And uh, now, when Jesus said that he's coming back again, uh, this is not, I mean, let me use the word probably because some theologians differ on this, but this is probably not referring to the rapture where he comes back as a thief in the night. It's coming back to Revelation chapter 19 where he comes back and sets up his kingdom. Yes. Did you want to explain it after the seven years and stuff like that? Well, there's going to be seven years of tribulation on earth, and the saints are going to be in heaven those seven years, and the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to take place there, maybe for seven years, I wouldn't say for sure. But uh, then Jesus is going to come back and set his kingdom up right here yes. on earth, yes. and he is going to cleanse the, the earth. It's going to be, the sin's going to, going to be cleansed, and it's going to be a, a paradise. It's going to be a place of happiness and joy and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's going to be uh, heaven on earth. Uh, yes. Uh, Bob, have you ever wondered about something and there's really nobody to really, really talk to? Uh, and if, if you, you wonder about a certain thing and you talk to somebody and that you look up to and they go, well, I don't know. You know, I wonder, there's no time in heaven and during that seven year tribulation, you know, the first three and a half years, and you got the Great Tribulation, the other three and a half years, and you got uh, seven years Tribulation. And Brother Dave, if you got some information on this, <clears throat> jump in here. Uh, this, God built the whole world in six days, and on the Sabbath day he rested. Yes. So there's your, 
you know, your seven days, and then you have a wedding feast. Uh, in Jerusalem, the wedding feast in the natural lasted seven days. You know, with the remember the water ran out mm -hmm. of, I mean, they ran out of wine. I wonder about this <coughs> seven-year, <coughs> seven-year uh, period. I wonder if that would be the banquet that will actually last seven years. I wonder if in heaven, where there's no time, will we have a banquet and then come back, like the Bible says, with Jesus and all the horses and everything, as if we didn't know seven years have passed. Mm. What do you think? Have you ever thought about that? Because <laughs> I'll think about stuff that nobody thinks about. Yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Is that one of those ones you don't, you, you don't, you won't know? You won't know. I, I don't believe. I do, do, do think though, like you're saying, because time is so uh, just minute with the Lord, you know. So like seven years, like you're saying, we're just going to get there, and it seems like that seven years is done, 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 done. Came around. It's done. Time to leave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 because the Bible says that one day is a thousand to the Lord. Yeah. So, but to us. You know, we even with our loved ones, I always tell friends of mine that I know well, I always say, you know, if we lose someone, tomorrow we're going to wake up and we're going to be with them because it, the day is like a thousand to the Lord. So Amen. it's just going to be one day you're here and the next day you're with your loved one. It's not going to be like 50. It's not going to seem that long because, right, you're going to wake up. And do you, you know what I mean? The time, well, yeah. the time thing is. They're not going to be up there saying that. Well, it took you 50 years yeah, to get here. There. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a good word. Yeah, so. You have I mean, anything to add, Bob? No, not. No, okay. That's a good <laughs> word right there. Okay, now, um, Jesus is saying something very unique in chapter, I mean, verse 7. If you had known, uh, let me read that again. If you have known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you have known him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it will be sufficient for us. So here is Philip asking a point blank question. Show us the Father. And if you have something to say, just, just jump in there. Yeah. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you have a different translation that that would say something different? No, I have something in helps on uh, 7. It says, walk in, walk in faith, and our walk with the Lord is all in faith. Amen. And it says a key word of John's Gospel is, Believe. Faith is important to our understanding of scriptures and to the spiritual activity in our life. Faith likes love eventually itself in obedience. Faith approaches God boldly and receives from Him. And action part of it is recognize that Jesus is the only way to God Knowing Jesus is to know God. Amen. So you have to have faith uh, in who Jesus said he is. Yes. Now, yes. At, that, at that time, Ruthie, uh, they, they could see all the miracles that he was doing. And he said, blame me for the works that I do. But they didn't believe that. Well, you know, I, I think it's also what he's trying to do there. He's all bringing back and confirming again who he is and who his father is and why he was sent here. You yeah. know, and, 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 and that's why each one of us, we can see the miracles and we can see all that, but we forget who he was. I mean, who he was, is that's doing those miracles, you know, because we, we, we just kind of fall into kind of limbo, say, I call it, your mind kind of gets... It's kind of washed out or something. Yeah. But you forget who really did it. And that's what Jesus is here. He's reminding him, Philip again, that it's him. You know, you, uh, you see me, you see the Father. You've seen the works and all of that. But I'm telling you again, because this isn't the first time he's told him that. No. He's telling him again. I'm, I'm confirming it like we do a kid. I'm telling you again, because I want you to remember this. 
You haven't remembered. You haven't let this sink in. But I'm telling you again, I love you and I want you to know. Amen. So he's making sure this, uh, mm -hmm. in fact, that word, I like that word, it sinks in because uh, we don't have time tonight, but a lot of times he would say certain things that has not sunk in mm -hmm. to them, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, at that time, yeah. Yeah, at that time. Now, uh, in chapter, uh, well, let me give you something real quick. Uh, I feel like I say a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, uh, that hasn't sunk in. Let me give you one real quick. Over here in John chapter 2. Uh, this is Jesus. He ch chased out the money changers. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And uh, they walked up to him, the scribes and Pharisees, saying, who do you think you are? <laughs> you know. You know. And, uh, and here is in verse 19. And Jesus answered and said uh, to them, destroy this temple and in three days I'll rise it up. And then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you rise it up in three days? But the next verse, 21, says, But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this mm -hmm. to them. And they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus said. So. All through the Bible, if you read the book of John, which I call reading it slowly, you find that they remembered what he said. They remembered what he said. You know, after the crucifixion yes, and the resurrection, yes. they remembered all these different things. Now, we move down to verse uh, 11. And if I ever skip a verse, you, you tell me, okay? Uh, Ruth, okay. you know, uh, tell me, Chris. Uh, you're still in Thessalonians here, aren't you? Yep. How come? Because <laughs> you're in John. Somebody got to be in Thessalonians. No, we're not going to go back to that anymore. <laughs> we're in we're in John. Okay, we're in John uh, chapter uh, ten. Do not believe that I I am in the Father and the Father in me. The wor words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. Isn't that amazing? The works that Jesus is doing, he's saying, it's the Father inside of me who's doing the work. Now, if you're watching this program for any period of time, you remember that I said that uh, when somebody breaks their leg, uh, it takes three or four months to get better. But basically, it's God putting the bones back together again. But Jesus came along and said to the paralegic, pick up your bed and walk. He did it instantaneously. Um, it takes three or four or five years to get a good crop of grapes to grow in order to make wine. But the water and the rain and the fertilizer and the sunshine and everything brings about the grapes to get to a certain um, quality where they can get the grapes and grind them up and, and turn them into wine. But all that's being done by God anyway. It's all nature being done by God. But Jesus comes along and he turns the water into wine in a couple seconds. Real quick. Now you go to the grocery store and you buy a loaf of bread. Well, it took a, a lot of people to slice it and wrap it and make it and put it in paper and then they had to go and grow it in the field and the wheat had to get to a certain point. Then they had to have a farmer c cut it up and all. And they had to grow from the little seeds. I'm going backwards in the actual growing the, of the bread. But it took several months and months and maybe even a year to get the, the wheat harvest to be wheat enough for it to be bread. But Jesus comes along and multiplies the loaves and bread and the fishes within seconds. So when he says, I only do the works of my Father, that is actual proof that he's actually doing the works of his Father. That's good. So anyway, uh, we have verse 11. Uh, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Now, that's what you just brought out, Bob and Ruthie, about uh, the works proved who he was. Yep. Walking on the water, healing, healing the sick people, raising the dead. Mm -hmm. 
and the people who had leprosy. Amen. And he had power over the wind and the ocean. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to add to that? or Whatever he yeah. said came to pass. It came to pass. Yeah. Yeah. It came to pass. Okay, in verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. Beverly, you want to uh, explain that? Yes, it means more works. It doesn't mean greater works, because obviously raising someone from the dead, which Jesus did, is probably the most... Uh, Difficult thing, I would say, although for Jesus it wasn't difficult. <laughs> but uh, he's meaning we will do more works. A number will increase. Not that we will do greater in that there's something greater you can do here. It's just that we will do more because there's more of us. And Well, um, a good example was you point out the other day that uh, Peter stood up in the other day of Pentecost and preached a sermon and 3,000 people were added to the church. Yes. You know, right away. Is that right, Ruth? Mm -hmm. And they were all born again. Yes. And see, uh, um, I can't be in a convalescent home, and, and you're there preaching, and there's people just like you and Bob all over the world, yes. hopefully in convalescent yes. homes, preaching, and you're not there, but you're the one that you're yeah. into. It's just hard to imagine. Well, it takes everybody in God's harvest to yes. bring it in. That's right. Yeah. There's not room for anybody to be left out. No. And we do need a lot of people to uh, to uh, bring the harvest in because there's a lot of souls. Yes. And uh, I don't want to get in on uh, too much on, on an end times, but time is running out. You look at the radio, uh, not you listen to the radio, and you look at the TV and look at the newspapers. It's getting pretty scary out there if you don't know Jesus. Yes. If you don't know Jesus, you wonder what is going on. But there's a peace that sets in that the world don't have. No matter what happens, uh, if there's wars or rumors of wars or earthquakes or hurricanes or twisters, it's that peace of knowing that God has you in his hand. Is that right? Amen. Yes. So like you said, uh, whether you're dead or whether you're alive, uh, you, you have peace. Yes, that's right. If you have something to add, just jump in there. Well, okay, yeah. the Bible says to be absent, absent. from the Bible. is from the, the body. body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. So we know that when we die, we go to God immediately. There's a shell in the grape, but we, our spirit man, is with the Lord. Yes, amen. And so that's something special to look forward to, to know that you're not going into nothingness. You're going oh, yeah. to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's good. You, uh, you, you go home with the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, going back, oh, no, going oh, back yeah. to uh, this, uh, <laughs> going back to this first ex example of the rapture with uh, Enoch. Uh, I, uh, I'm always telling my wife little stories that make her laugh, you know, <laughs> and uh, all the time, you know, and, and I just like to to talk to people and explain things. And uh, this grandmom, she had this 10-year-old, uh, 11-year-old little boy, and she sent him to the Sunday school class, only she didn't go herself. For some reason, she didn't want to bother with church. And I don't know what, what all the ramifications of that was, but she just didn't go. And, and so the little boy came home, and he wants to change his clothes to go out and play. So his grandmother says, well, what you learn in Sunday school class? He said, oh, I don't know. She said, what do you mean you don't know? He said, well, it wasn't much. Uh, some guy named Enoch, and, and God took a walk. So he's changing his clothes, and, and she said, well, wh wh what about it? A guy named Enoch, and God took a walk? Well, what happened? He said, I don't know. He just took a walk. I'm going to go outside and play. And, and she said, wait a minute. You've been in church for a year? I mean, for an hour and a half? And all you know is he took a walk with God? He said, well, it was some deal where this guy named Enoch, he took a long walk with God. And it was so far away 
that it was too far to go back to Enoch's house. So God just said, come to my house instead. <laughs> I'll take you home to my house. <laughs> and that was the story. <laughs> From an 11-year-old point of view, you know. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so anyway, uh, where am I at? Back on the farm here. Am I in, in verse 12? You have to keep an eye on me, guys, because <laughs> if I get... Uh, get talking here about something or explain a, a verse or something, I'll lose my place. Verse 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do in greater works, which we just talked about, than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, let me say this. Uh, back in the 60s, and you probably have stories to tell too, but a lot of people that came into the churches back then didn't understand. They just didn't, they came in on Sunday morning, but they didn't study the Bible, you know. And they thought, well, I'll just ask God for a Cadillac. <laughs> and they didn't, didn't get the Cadillac. So they say, well, this can't be right. It's according to God's will, right? Right. Oh, man. Yes. Do you have anything to say? No. No? <laughs> you guys have me doing all the talking. <laughs> you're doing good. <coughs> you guys act like you're afraid of that camera right there. <laughs> in my helps, it says in 1412, yeah. the promise is not that the disciples of Jesus will perform works that are greater in value or significance than his, rather that they are greater in scope and in numbers in these respects. Because he was crucified, Jesus' early ministry was limited only to a few years, but after the resurrection and Pentecostal, his ministry was a continue and continued to multiply through the spiritual empowerment of believers. Our works include the preaching of the gospel, results in the blessing of justification, reconciliation, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit coming to humankind. All post-resurrection manifestation of Jesus Christ's reign. Praise God. So there's a lot of things that, that people can do, and a lot of things that people are doing around the world that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard a story, and, uh, 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 you know, uh, I have, I'm bad on names, too. I, I can memorize the whole story and forget the name of the person. <laughs> Like you know. that, but I understand in the fifties uh, there was a uh, famous American evangelist, and uh, oh, I wish I could think of his name, but he went to China, and it was an underground church, and I guess there was thousands of people underground in this big church, and he was going there, and he was walking down these steps that curl around, and. Uh, the interpreter said to him, we are so honored to have an American teacher to teach us the Bible. We have an interpreter down there, and he will say everything that, that, that you say. We are so blessed. He said, we, we are not very good. He said, we have only raised five people from the dead because we're learning. And he looked at them and said, how many? <laughs> and he kind of felt like he was out of his leg a little bit, you know? Yeah. So it's something to, to think about. <coughs> okay. You want to take another rabbit trail? Okay. A rabbit trail? Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Dave's going to take us uh -oh. on a rabbit trail. Okay. Uh -oh. On trail. Are you in the picture? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the picture. <coughs> when... Uh, it's amazing to me how, how sometimes we repeat, we don't learn from history, we repeat the same mistakes. And you're talking about <coughs> performing more miracles 
uh, than Jesus did simply because he was only on the earth for three years. But one of the things that really struck me as I was listening to the teaching was we're talking about destroying the temple and, and uh, Jesus said, you destroy this temple and I will raise it in three days. And the scribes and the Pharisees said, well, they, they thought he was talking about the building the temple and Christ was talking about his body right. the temple. Right. Fast forward to today, sometimes when we talk about the church, the, those with the religious mindset, when they think of the church, they think of the building, the organization, the denomination. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus, I think, wants us to think about is the bride of Christ, which is the body, which are the people. The Amen. church is not the building. The church are the people. And so I think in some ways uh, this kind of story is still unfolding today is that we're mixing up the church and and we we're confusing the church with an organization denomination building structure when it's the church is actually all of us here going out and doing the work of the gospel that's the church and that's and so I as that that kind of revelation or that thought came to me as I was hearing that teaching I thought well you know what in some ways we're still doing that same thing yes uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, <clears throat> some people when they talk about church, talking about the building, organization, denomination, and in fact Christ wants us to look at another view of the church, which are the people, which are the bride of Christ, which are the body. So, Amen. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I, I wanted to share that. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, when Jesus did say that, destroy this temple, in three days I'll rise it up, uh, you and I naturally was were not there. We, you know, wasn't physically stand there. So, uh, the temple is that big building, and we don't know what his body language was. I mean, he, he, he probably didn't say destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. He could have said the same words like destroy this temple mm -hmm. to himself, and I will rise it up in three days. The words are just the same. But he just changed the way his hands were. So as you know, the scribes and Pharisees, they uh, lied and said, well, you know, he says go destroy the whole thing and took 46 years to build it. So anyway, that, that's a good word, Brother Dave. Okay, verse 15, is that right, everybody? Oh, I'm sorry, verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Isn't it wonderful to ask God uh, that he will help you to glorify his name? You do that every time you walk into a convalescent home. You ask God, uh, let me uh, glorify your name somehow or bring somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And, and that's how you're glorifying God. You're glorifying God uh, in, in, our, in our walks, in our life. You know, you're, you're dedicating your life to, to telling people about Jesus Christ. It'd be just as easy to sit home and watch TV. <laughs> <coughs> it's almost easier to sit home and watch TV. You don't have to do a thing but press a button. But you... Uh, you're dedicating your life to to helping uh, people me, to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, verse 15. If you have something to say, just jump in there. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. You see that word, forever? He's, not, he's going to be with believers forever. Now, I know there's a uh, teaching in the body of Christ. I was teaching in a church one time. I was down in the basement. And uh, this is really opening up a can of worms. But a bunch of ladies came to me in there. I was teaching in another class. And uh, I just walked into the church. And they said, go downstairs and, and teach. So I went down there, and I lived in the basement. But I never attended the, the church services, because I was in there teaching all the time. 
And they came to me with this question, and I knew their particular theology, and I won't mention the church, but they said, this Holy Spirit is going to be with us forever. I said, right. And they said, now the question is, we're taught the Holy Spirit's going to be taken away, you know, and then the man of sin is going to come. But the Word of God says forever. I said, well, look at it this way. It could be the church is being taken away, but the Holy Spirit will be here because Jesus said he would be here forever. Besides, how can the tribulation saints get saved without the Holy Spirit? And the head teacher of the, of the ladies' group said, My God! She said, In other words, if there's no conviction, there's no conversion. I said, Right. right. You have to have, you're not going to get your head cut off because grandmom and grand, granddad is missing. No. You're going to have to make a stand and say, uh, Well, the rapture took place. Millions upon millions upon millions of people are missing. What do I do now? We have seven years. They have seven years. I hope no one's listening to this will be in that situation. Can I say something? Sure, jump in there. Okay, the Bible teaches that during the tribulation, the only way you will be saved is to have your head cut off. So that's why Bill mentioned that. In case you have not read that in the Bible and don't know that. In other words, don't take the mark no. of the beast on your... On your forehead and on your, on your head. It's, Amen. It's a mark that lets you buy and sell and do business and live. And if you don't take the mark, they will cut your head off. So how do you get out of that? Is accept Jesus Christ now. That's right. Amen. Amen. And on that particular topic of teaching, <coughs> yeah. one thing we should remember is that after we're raptured, this teaching is on the internet and this teaching will remain. And people may be watching this teaching who are left behind after the rapture. So yes. you could be speaking to people who are left behind. Well, that's true that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I want to warn them, please, getting your head chopped off is so much better than living in eternity without the Lord. Amen. Anything is better than being without the Lord. I mean, what we're seeing, I don't want to get into no uh, uh, political situation, but we're seeing stuff that are... That mothers and fathers would never imagine no, or even no. people 10 years ago would, would never imagine this taking mm -hmm. place and uh, uh, <coughs> I understand that there's revivals taking place around the world that are just absolutely awesome where people are coming to Jesus by the by the hundreds of thousands and if you're watching you need to be one of those people yes. by just going through the sinner's prayer by asking Jesus Christ uh, to come into your heart and to forgive, confess your sins to him and uh, accept him as your personal savior. In fact, it says in Romans, you want to turn to Romans chapter 10, you can actually read that uh, uh, scripture. And this is the scripture. Uh, in fact, it may sound a little bit better in the NIV. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says right here, I want to add a little bit, but go ahead. It says in Romans 10, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thy heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's old King James. New King James is, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in, in your heart that God has risen, risen him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with thy heart one believes unto righteousness, and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation. What does your Bible say? It says that if, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You, you want to too? Okay. For, for it is with your heart that you believe, and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you are confess, confess, and are saved. So you have to, you have to confess that He is Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. this is where you can open up another can of worms. I'm about ready to open another can of worms. So go ahead. The, you go into the prison, and they go, well, "I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus." And I go, "Well, that's good." I said, "So does the devil." 
<laughs> and so do the demons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But you have to make a confession yeah, to invite true. him into your heart. Okay, Brother Dave. Okay, another can of worms. Uh oh. So, <laughs> so this is this is just kind of, <clears throat> you know, in my in my prayer time this morning, you know, we often hear um, revival. You know, people, the church is just praying for revival. I just want revival. I just want revival. And and Brother Steve or Brother Smith or whatever, I just want revival. I just want revival. Revival, 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 praying, praying, praying. I want revival. And then we sit there and wait for it to happen like it's going to fall out of the sky. And, God, I want revival. And we sit there and wait. Okay, and so in my prayer time, I wasn't praying about revival, but this just thought came to me. <clears throat> I believe it was from God about revival and, and how to start revival. And I'm not saying that I have the magic formula. I hate formulas. Uh, we just need to be led by the Spirit. But what I believe the Spirit was telling me was uh, pray for revival, believe that it will happen and is happening, and then go out and start spot fires. Action. Yeah. Amen. So what, what I mean by a spot fire is you just say, okay, God, I want to start revival. And so how, another thing that we say a lot here is how does that look today? Okay. How do I start a spot fire today? How do I start the fire the, of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God, the expansion? <clears throat> you say, okay, God, give me divine appointments. Give me something today. Uh, give a situation in my life, in my work, in my when I buy groceries or whatever, where can I share the kingdom? And if you pray that prayer every day, uh, it puts feet to the gospel. It gets you out into the street so you can share this. And I think sometimes people are, are afraid to do that because they don't think they know enough of the Bible. And one way to solve that is read more of the Bible. But don't be intimidated, you know, even a baby Christian. In fact, there's a, there's a gal, uh, Denise Reed, Denise, I think it's Denise Reed in New Zealand. I hope she's watching. Uh, what she loves to do, which I think is great, and I, we're way off on a bunny trail here. It's okay. Uh, uh, she'll, she'll convert somebody to, to Jesus and then she'll see somebody limping over in the corner and she'll take this new convert and say, go pray for that person. That's wonderful. And I just have been saved. And she says, yeah, we see a lot of miracles happen for baby Christians more than, yeah. than people who have been in the faith a lot of years. Uh -huh. And so these new baby Christians go over there and they pray for this person to be healed and they're healed. And they're blown away that God would use them when they've only been in the kingdom for minutes. Mm -hmm. And so Den uh, Denise Richards... Uh, Denise Reed, I'm I'm as bad with names as you are. I need a I need a I need a I need a play card or a score scorecard. I'm like a baseball player. I need to have a scorecard with names on it. Uh, uh, I think her name is Denise Reed. She'll probably kill me if I ever meet her. But that's what she does. She she just she does street evangelism. She takes people, converts them to Jesus, and says, "Okay, now go go tell the next person you see about what Jesus means to you." And then more specifically, she says, "Go pray for that person to be healed." They say, well, what do I pray? Just in Jesus' name, be healed. And then what, and just ask God for the words to say to, uh, to heal that person. And, and uh, they're healed. So um, I often hear, you know, brother, brother Bill, I want revival in the church. I want revival. It's not happened yet, Brother Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pray some more. Okay, well, pray, praying is good, but pray it, believe it will happen, and then say, okay, God, use me to start it. Give, give your uh, prayer feet. Go out and do something. Look for an opportunity. Start the fire burning. Um, one of the things is I was reading about the Welsh revival, Evan Roberts uh, in uh, Welsh, is that Scotland? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Welsh Revival is one of the historic movements of God. Evan Roberts was just a man who was, a, I believe, a coal miner. And I'm remembering all this at the spur of the moment, but I read the book, and it, he was a coal miner, I believe, young man. Uh, and he went to church every night for 13 years. And he was just uh, just a commoner, just loved God and just sought God and, and, and learned and learned and learned and learned and learned. But he just had this passion for God. And, and the Welsh Revival sprang from this one man who had a burning passion to share Jesus. And the cool thing about the Welsh Revival 
is that there were Sundays where the soccer stadiums were totally emptied because everybody was in church. And um, what we're praying for is just a few days after that, after the Welsh revival stopped, the churches were empty and the stadiums were full again. So what we're praying for is the revival that happens be sustained. Amen. And we can learn, I think, from the lessons of that and other revivals to see what stopped it and, and try not to repeat those same mistakes. But uh, I, I just hear people just praying for revival and praying for revival. And, and my response is, go do something to make it happen. Start a fire. I, I call it go out and start spot fires. And spot fires, what I'm talking about is second chapter of Acts, where the Holy Spirit fell like tongues of fire. Um, now, it, it may not be literally tongues of fire, but you can go out and, and um, just share Jesus and do it in a very raci relational way that uh, you can explain Jesus to people on the street and um, start a spot fire. That could be going up and praying. I have a friend who, who converted a witch in a Walmart check stand to Jesus Christ. Praise God. Uh, you can, uh, you don't have to wait to go to church. The witch probably won't be in church. The witch will be at Walmart. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about Walmart. It's just where it happened. It could have happened in Kmart or, or by Mart or any other place, any other Marts. See if I can offend everybody at once. Um, but we just, to, to, I believe that in this hour, just to look, say, God, as you wake up in the morning, what I do is, okay, God, what are we going to do today? Let's build the kingdom. And it's amazing to me that God wants us to co-labor with him in building his kingdom on earth. Isn't that amazing? It yeah. is amazing. It is. Isn't that just blows you away that the creator of everything says, I want you to work with me to build the kingdom. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Isn't that's, that cool? That's, that's wonderful. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go away now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name again? <laughs> Bill. <laughs> You know, God is going to use a, a, a revival um, any way he wants to. Amen. It's God doing yes. it. It's not yes. men. You know, I was a, in a church years ago, and my uh, Sunday school class was right next to the pastor's office, and he was trying to study. And uh, the people in the class would be laughing and giggling all the time. And he said, Bill, what are you doing in there? <laughs> well, I try to explain uh, little things. And, and uh, sometimes you use, uh, you know, funny stories uh, to, to get a point across, you know. But a revival uh, is in the hands of God. Absolutely. And one of the stories was uh, this uh, minister went to a, a country town, and they had the big old logs out there. And uh, everybody was sitting on the logs out there in the open. And he would be preaching out there. Uh, and uh, his preaching was so bad that hardly nobody, nobody showed up. And uh, about eight or nine people there, and this one old man was sitting on, a, on the end of the log, and he was just flat falling asleep because it was so bad. And he fell off the log, and he fell into a mud puddle. And then away was that, and he woke up and started screaming and falling around the mud puddle. <coughs> well, the whole town showed up the following day because they thought the Spirit of God fell, you know, with this guy. <laughs> and the preaching got better. But God uses anything he wants to use. <laughs> Even somebody falling asleep. <laughs> so anyway, where are we at here? Am I, I did 17, right? Well, I'm not quite sure. Let me back that back up to 15. If you believe me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, which is called the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. Boy, isn't that true? Neither knows him. But you know him, for he will dwell with you and will be in you. Can you imagine the disciples trying to figure out who this Holy Spirit is, mm -hmm. that he's going to be inside of you? Mm -hmm. I mean, Ruthie, we have people today, 
uh, in the body of Christ that do not know that they refer to the Holy Spirit as an it rather than the third person of the Trinity who lives inside of you. And uh, you know when you walk into a convalescent home, I don't know about you or not, but sometimes you don't know what to say. And he just gives you that wisdom mm -hmm. that brings yeah. all things to your remembrance. Amen. And that's the Holy Spirit, you know, telling Amen. you what to say. Do you have anything to add? It's a good thing there's a Holy Spirit because most of us are pretty um, unskilled on our own level on talking about the Lord and things of the Lord. Well, I am the least of the least. <laughs> I have no idea what... We, we fight over that one, buddy. <laughs> you do? Oh, boy, you've been listening to those people <laughs> starting a rumor that I'm, I'm supposed to know the Bible and I don't. <laughs> In chapter 14, 16... 16? Uh, okay. Uh, 14, 16, and my, it says uh, another is a loss or all lost in the strongs, one beside another of the same kind. The word shows similarity and diversity of operation and ministry of Jesus used, used the all lost for sending another comforter equal one beside aid me and he will do in my absence what I would do if I were physically present with you the spirit comes coming assures continually what Jesus did and taught Amen. And the, and the Spirit uh, gives recognition and teaches everything that Jesus said. Yeah. The Spirit would never contradict what Jesus said. That's yeah. the wrong kind of Spirit. Mm. Yeah. We have seen people, I've seen people years ago, 10, 15 years ago, and I just kind of say the word, very, very spooky. And I, I know that you see people like that. Yeah. operating in the church and you know they're in the flesh but they're uh, they're out there doing stuff and they're giving you a word and stuff like that and, and they call it practicing you know well in the Old Testament they would stone the prophets if they were wrong mm -hmm. yeah. it's not called practicing either you're right yeah. or you're wrong yeah. you know it's called the Holy Spirit of God speaking through you yeah so with the <laughs> and, and don't don't it's think <laughs> and don't think that a, Oh, I've been told by people that I should pack my suitcases and go to Africa, you know, <laughs> and preach the gospel. But see, God didn't tell me to do that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd be in a, a, a world of hurt with a suitcase in the middle of Africa and say, now what do I do? <laughs> you know, some lion says, you're my lunch, <laughs> you know. Okay, this spirit of truth, this whole precious Holy Spirit, uh, he will dwell in you. He will be in you. He will teach you all things. This doesn't mean that uh, you don't need to go to church and hear a sermon from a good pastor or, or a Sunday school teacher. It means to, to add on to what the Holy Spirit is, is, is teaching you. And the Holy Spirit uh, is a third person of the Trinity. There is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now I'm going to get into some more, oh, talk about a night of opening up cans of worms. And uh, if, I'm ex ex if you know a better way, please jump in there. But there's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's like you put a, a pot and you put water in and you put it in the freezer. And you take it out, well, it's all ice in the pot. And you put the ice on the stove and you boil it and it becomes water. It's no longer ice. But then if you leave the pot there, it turns into steam, and the steam goes up and disappears. Now, the steam was not the water, and the water was not the ice. So you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, the all three are one, but they're all separated in their identity. Jesus is praying to the Father. When Jesus was baptized by John, the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove, and a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 
So there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's a Trinity right there. Now, if you're a baby Christian, and you're looking at that, you're going, well, how can that be? Now, I don't know if this is a good uh, uh, illustration, but you ladies may help me on this. You take an egg, you have the shell, you got the white part, and you got the yolk, mm -hmm. right? But it's still an egg. It's, it's still one, but it can be separated. Do you have a better way of... of no, that's what I always... You do? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Bob, do you have a better way? Or? No. No. Eggs. Eggs? You like, like, you like the eggs? <laughs> yeah, I like the egg. Okay. And uh, uh, we are a... Uh, and go a little bit deeper, we are a spirit, soul, so and body. So... Uh, Three parts. We, we're body, and... Uh, we have a mind, it's, it's our soul, our emotions, our intellect, uh, but we also have a spirit that's inside of us. I had a friend of mine said, it's like a Noah inside of you. Your Noah becomes one with God. The Bible mm -hmm. says, he was joined to the Lord is one spirit. So, yeah, I know you got something to add about that, because <laughs> if you don't know Jesus, you, you're dead and don't know it. Yeah. Right? That's you're right. walking around and you're dead. Mm -hmm. That's why it must be something to walk into a, a convalescent home and, and see, see somebody get saved right in front of you. Now, there could be somebody out there watching the computer right now who uh, could bow their head and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and that would be wonderful, but we would never see it or know it unless they emailed us and said, I just became born again, then we would know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Yes. That would EVM one dot info. Yes. EVM one dot info. EVM one dot info. Bill at Bill at EVM one dot info. Bill at EVM one dot info. Right. We we don't use that there w it is. we don't use that <laughs> WW anymore. Okay. You don't want to do that. I am so confused about that because I have well tips looking at this whole show on something called Bluetooth or, <laughs> or Facebook or YouTube, YouTube. And, and some other stuff and uh, they're just picking it up and adding to it, you know, and I'm just so blessed because I don't care how it gets out there just so somebody gets saved. Yes, amen. Amen. Right, you know, and uh, uh, God is a good God. Anyway, um, verse 18, am I right there? Okay. Well, let me take you to the tail end of 17. He will dwell with you and he will be in you. So the precious Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And uh, it's best, really best, to uh, accept Jesus Christ before the rapture. Amen. Because after the rapture, the only way you can do it is probably uh, get your head chopped off. I don't know if you remember uh, Bob, but 20 some years ago they had these movies called Left Behind and, mm -hmm. the, and the Four yeah. Horsemen. Mm -hmm. And it showed people running around out in the woods, picking up Bibles, trying to figure out what happened to grandmom and granddad and stuff like that. Well, and then grabbing canned goods and stuff and trying to eat them and stuff like that because they didn't want to get their head chopped off. But nowadays, with the technology they have, you can't do that. They're going to know exactly Amen. where you're at. Amen. If you're in the woods, some people say, oh, well, I accept Jesus when I get around to it, but if that ever happens, I'll just hide out in the woods. No way can you go hide out in the woods. You have to do something like now. If you can't accept Jesus now, well, you have all this freedom and ministers on every TV station. How are you going to do it when it's against the law? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You won't be able to. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to. No. No. And, and what kind of a woman would be washing her dishes and for some reason, you know, maybe she's a non-believer and a husband and all her kids are missing? I mean, how does she handle that? Or it could be a man working in the in the garage or something, or fixing his tractor, and he goes in and his wife and all his kids are missing. It is so easy just to say, 
Jesus, come into my heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, people are afraid that it's hard to serve the Lord, but what they're thinking is that I've got to do it on my own. I've got to serve the Lord. I've got to make the decision. But the truth is, when you serve Jesus, He lives inside of you, and He helps you to serve Him. The Holy Amen. Spirit is there to to keep you right. And yes. To, and He holds you, and He helps you all the way. Yeah. So it's not you all alone. It's you with the Holy Spirit, and He is certainly able to keep those keep what you commit to Him. You know, I've lost count of how many times in a, in a prison atmosphere where people would come to the Book of John class. And of course, if somebody wanted to accept Jesus, that would stop the whole class. Uh, we would oh, yes. we would take them through the sinner's prayer right there, and I would have him have everybody in the class welcome him to the class. You know, and, and, and that was just a wonderful experience. But uh, I've lost count of how many times you know, weeks go by, and the, and the same guy sitting in the corner, and he's got tears in his eyes, and he's crying. So when the class is over, he walk up and say, "Is everything okay?" And he go, "Where have I been for forty years? Why didn't I accept Jesus?" He said, I am so afraid. I understand stuff. I look at the TV. I, I am so free. You know? Yeah. Uh, we, had a, we had a guy uh, come into our class. And, uh, see, when you're in the body of Christ, there's no s such thing as nationality or the color of your skin or or anything at all, we are all in the body of Christ. And uh, in this one particular class, I had this gentleman come in, and, and uh, he looked around, you know, and of course, you know, I, I knew what he was thinking, that he was the only uh, black man in the whole class. Didn't bother me any, because I'm a Christian. And uh, I've been teaching, and I'm thinking now, how can I get this guy to realize that the love I have inside me so I made the comment, I said, you know, every morning I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning for the past uh, three and a half years and I look at Kreplo Dollar. He's a wonderful man of God, which I don't know if you know Kreplo Dollar, he happens to be a wonderful pastor. His skin happens to be black, which is no big deal, you know. But at the end of the service, he walks up to me and says, you look at Kreplo Dollar? I said, I love him. He, he's my... Uh, one of my favorite ministers, but I said, he wouldn't know me if he bumped into me on the street. I said, he, well, he doesn't know me. I said, but I know him. I know his heart. Make a long story short, this man uh, accepts Jesus Christ as a Savior, calls his mom up on the phone, and he says, Mom, uh, I've been going to this class, and this is this ugly white man <laughs> with a crew cut. <laughs> Took me through the sinner's prayer. It was me. And his mom started to cry over the phone. He told me that his mom uh, talked to him for an hour and a half. He said, for the first time in my life, I was on the same page with my mother. The first time we were talking. And he came back to me and he said, my mom said to thank you very much. And I said, tell your mom that I didn't do nothing. It was all Jesus. And tell her I will see her in heaven. So the following week, he says, I told my mom what you said. And uh, she said, I'll see you in heaven too. Praise God. Amen. But she said, to tell you thank you anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, by the way, you're not an ugly, ugly white man. <laughs> I said, I appreciate that. <laughs> I said, I may be white, but I could be ugly, you know. <laughs> so, you know, you cannot run the prayers of a mother. That, that's the bottom line. Amen. You, you, if, you, if you're in prison or in a convalescent home, you might as well just f give up. Because uh, you just can't outrun the prayers of a mother who's praying for you constantly. And Jesus says in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. 
Boy, isn't that true? Yes. But you will see me because I live. You uh, live also. So we're, we're living when we have Jesus Christ in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And even when we die, uh, we we're still living. Yes. Now people say, well, how can you prove that? Well, let's go over here to uh, John chapter 11, uh, verse 25. You want to look at that, baby? Oh, yeah. Chapter 11, verse 25. This is Martha. Let's go back to, to 24. And this is Martha saying to Jesus. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last days. This is Martha talking about Lazarus. She was saying, if you only would have been here, our brother would have been still alive. But in verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. You get that? Never die? And he says, do you believe this? Uh, I believe that. I know you guys believe that. Yes. And uh, that assurance um, gives you peace that passes all understanding. Um, he says in verse 19, A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will at that day you will know that I am in the Father and you you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So in other words, you have to love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You, you cannot separate them. Amen. I, I, I knew a woman one time, she said she loved Jesus, but uh, she wasn't quite sure about the Father, because the Father in the Old Testament seemed to be killing a lot of people, and telling Moses, go kill the Philistines, and, and, and do go tell, uh, not Moses, but uh, Samson, and then tell uh, Moses, go wipe out all these people and stuff like that. Well, Jesus says to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I explained to her that they are both one. But uh, you can't have sin in front of God and God just going to turn his face. No. You know, remember yeah. that question was asked to you by one of the guys up in prison? You know, oh, yeah. and you explain how that some of the tribes and war people had all kinds of diseases. Yeah, so many sexual diseases they would have destroyed the whole creation if they had kept going. So that was getting into the, uh, what's in there, some of the names of them, the, the, names, of who? the names of the people that Joshua and them killed. Uh, Oh. The Captain Amanax and the Amanax. 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 Yeah. Hittites. Hittites yeah. and the Amanax. Hittites. Yeah. Hittites. Yeah. All the Ikes. All the Ikes and the bed bugs. The bed bugs. Yeah. <laughs> no bed bugs. <laughs> well, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a reason for all that because uh, those people um, were not worshiping uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know? No. No, they were not. So, uh, and they were moving into what they call the promised land. So, here we are in verse uh, 20. Is that right? No, we're in verse 21. Probably 21. 21. He who ha uh, has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, now this is not Judas Iscariot, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Well, basically he was hung up on the cross. And he said, I would draw all men 
unto myself. But it's it gets down to a choice, don't it? Yes. Yes. You know, it gets a down personal to personal choice. A personal choice. It's either believing or non believing. Mm -hmm. So in verse twenty three, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. You notice how he says, we will come to him? So you can't separate the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus only did the works of his Father. Satan tried to come along and make Jesus do something separate from the Father, separate from the Holy Spirit. How did he do that? He came along and said to Jesus in Matthew, he said, if you are the Son of God, Turn these stones into bread. Yes. Now, he could have very easily did that. Oh, yes. But he said, it's written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So he didn't fall for Satan's trick. He no. did not operate independently from the Holy Spirit. He did not operate independently from God because he said, I only do the works of God. I only speak the works of God. I only say what God tells me to say. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you notice, you can add on to this, Jesus didn't do any public miracles until after he got baptized by the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if he needed the Holy Spirit, like it says in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, is that right? How much more do we need the Holy Spirit? Yeah, but in case someone out there doesn't know where that's at, oh. Acts chapter 10, verse... Uh, 38 um, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him I think if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit and his anointing of the Holy Spirit how much more do we need the Holy Spirit <laughs> Amen you know? Well, it said when he re received the Holy Spirit, he received power. Amen. So it went together. Amen. So that's why we receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the power of the Lord to be witnesses. And, and, and so that's why it's so important that we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Yes. Amen. If Jesus needed him, needed much, the Holy Spirit, then how much greater we need it. Oh, that's for need sure. Need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to... Take a, a little teeny rabbit trail for a second, guys. Okay, um, John chapter 1, verse 12. Are you there, Beverly? No, I'm not there. You just said it. <laughs> What's the hold up here? <laughs> John chapter 1, verse 12. It says, But as many as receive him, to them give him the right to become the children of God. Now, in the old King James, it says, but as many as receive him, to them give him the power yeah. to become the sons of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that, that's, that's a big difference. And if you go to Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 28, um, this is a, the Great Commission, whether people out there listening to these pages turning, Okay, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus spoke to them, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. The old King James says, All power yes. is given unto me in heaven and earth. He says, Go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Or the end of the age is the better translation. Now, over here in uh, in Mark chapter 16, here's another example of that power. Mark chapter 16. Um, I got a feeling we're on someone's Bible now. You know, looking at this on the internet. In, in verse 15, and he said to them, "Go into all the world." 
and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does does believe will be con- and he that does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, or my Bible says cast out demons. And they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and that they drink any deadly thing and should not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But in the old King James, which I, I keep referring to, it says that you he, we receive power uh, to do these things because of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, he's talking to his disciples. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. See what he's doing? He's giving them power Amen. and authority. Did you ever stop to think this was before the day of Pentecost? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And over here in Luke chapter 10, this is enough to stretch anybody's mind. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. 18. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Behold, I give unto you authority. Your Bible may say power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So I think I proved my case that he has given us power and uh, how did he give us that power? It's in Acts chapter 1. And you all know where we're going from here. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And he says, um, But ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and ye and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. So he's telling them that this power is coming. Now in chapter 2, the power falls. When the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire, one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then over here in Acts, let's take Romans, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'll just read out King James, this one. I don't particularly care for this translation. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. This Bible says in all these scriptures that the authority, but they all say the word power in the old King James. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So therefore, if you read that carefully, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. If you flip it over, and if you are embarrassed of the gospel, then there's no power. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a a thought to think Mm -hmm. about? Amen. Yes. I mean, if you walked into a convalescent home and you were afraid to say anything, you -hmm. couldn't demonstrate no power. Mm -hmm. So it's a an awesome <coughs> responsibility, a tremendous responsibility that God has given to us. Because when he says, I give unto you all power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, then we should use that power. Yes. Because it was given to us. Do you have anything to say about that? I know there's a lot of scriptures 
But you have anything to add to that? Or? They're all good scriptures. They are? <laughs> Amen. Oh, well, they're not supposed to be for us. They're supposed to be for people out there True. behind the camera. If they're good for us. They're going to be good for them, too. I you know, you know we like them, so you do? people like them. They're good. Well, I'm not preaching at you. It's good food. <laughs> it's good food, huh? It's yeah. good food for all of us. So it's, yes. not, it's not leftover stale bread, right? No. Now. We're not giving them scraps. We're giving them the meat of the Word. Amen. I don't, would you mind saying that in case somebody missed that? I said, you're not giving them scraps, you're giving them the meat of the word. Right. Leftover uh, stale bread's not too good, is it? No. no. The Bible's never leftover stale bread. No. It's always fresh. Always fresh. Always fresh. Let me read it. Well, you can tell this is fresh because we're literally talking about it and flipping the pages to look at it. <laughs> so there's no notes here. Yeah. <laughs> Except for that one piece of paper you have. <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile... Back at the farm, uh, <laughs> where are we at? We're in uh, uh, 25. I 25, think. that sounds pretty good to me. These things have I spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said. To you, isn't that wonderful? Did you ever? Oh, this is a silly question to ask, ask you guys, because uh, you're out there witnessing all the time, every every week, every day. Uh, but how many times have you want to say something, and, and the Holy Spirit would tell you, remember something, and you come up with a scripture, and you go, "Well, that was pretty good," but it wasn't you. He just reminded you, and. Uh, he brings all things to your remembrance. You know, Bill, what's really nice when you're praying for the, the people, because we pray for each one individual, is that the Holy Spirit brings up something, and you'll pray for each one in a different thing. But it, the Lord will just bring it up inside, and you'll know what to pray. Because yeah, you, you don't know what to pray, really, because I, I don't know those people, really. Right. But it'll just come up, and, and it, they'll just cry, and, and, and they'll thank you for praying. You yeah. know, it's just what they needed. And I always like that. Well, it's the Lord knew just exactly what they needed. And that's what I tell them. The Lord knows exactly yes. what you have need of, too. And the Holy Spirit will bring everything that you've heard tonight back to your remembrance. So you never forget. You think that you didn't, some things that you might not have caught. But later on, the Holy Spirit will bring it back up. And you'll say, oh, I remember reading that or hearing that on the Bible study on, on the book of John. And, and that's what's really nice, how the Holy Spirit brings, uh, uh, brings God's Word back to, to our remembrance. That's right. Well, you know what's so nice about this, and this is hard <laughs> for me to relate, because I am the least person in the world to uh, be sitting here because I don't know anything about computers. I mean, it, it's, it's a joke, you know. I mean, I know how to turn it on, but after that, I don't, well, what do you do with it? But uh, there's people out there... To my understanding, they can look at this show as many times as they want. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I, I knew I, I met some lady who's looking at chapter one, uh, and she's she looked at chapter one about four times, and I said, "Well, why don't you move on to chapter two? She said, "There's a lot of notes to take." <laughs> I said, "Well, you know, yeah, but go on to chapter two, where." There's a wedding feast, you know, and, <laughs> and there's a temple there. And they go on to chapter 3 with a guy named Nicodemus, and he came to Jesus by night. And I said, just don't get stuck in chapter chapter 1. That's right. It's good. You know, you have to kind of move on. Speaking of moving on, <laughs> uh, we, did, uh, we did 25. To, uh, I mean, uh, Bob said we did 25. Mm -hmm. We did 26, right, yes. Bob? Yes. Yeah, we just finished it. Okay, yeah. 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, Jesus is saying it, the same thing he said in the beginning. Let not your hearts be troubled. And he's saying, don't be afraid. Yes. Someone said he said that 365 times. One for every day in the, 
of the year. Yeah. Yeah. He does not want us to be afraid because the opposite of fear is to be afraid. Not quite. Opposite, the opposite of fear is to have courage. <laughs> I want to see if right. you guys are awake here. Yeah. <laughs> that was a test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the opposite from faith is to be afraid of everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You should have stopped me and corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> I said not quite, Bill. <laughs> no. I used to say in the prison, how many guys here know the Bible says you, you should know about the truth and it will set you free? And every hand would go up. And I go, well, no, are you sure? Does the Bible say know about the truth? Or does the Bible say to know the truth? And they start going through the Bible. And they go, well, what's the difference? I said, well, the devil knows about the truth. But he's not free. No, never will be. There's people all over the world who know about the truth, but never made a decision. That's right. And I know you've seen... Uh, in, your, in your ministry, how the head knowledge drops down in the heart and they become born again. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So here we are right now on uh, this unusual piece that in verse 27 that he gives to us. Nine that, minutes, Bill. Nine minutes? Nine minutes. You have something to say? Uh, you want to close it, close it up? No, not yet. Uh, you can go for a couple more minutes. Okay. Kind of okay, we are here uh, on um, 27. Uh, uh, 27. Uh -huh. He says, don't be afraid. Fear is a terrible thing. You know what I mean? You don't want to be afraid. Uh, you've got nine minutes, huh? Uh, you have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. He's coming back. He's coming back real Amen. quick. He's coming like a thief in the night, which is called the rapture. Uh, why is it mentioned like a thief in the night? Because uh, if you knew what, when the thief was coming, you would be, you would be, be ready. Yeah. But he's coming at a time you don't expect it. And uh, if we only have a few moments to go, uh, boy, I mean, I, I, I really don't care about being embarrassed to say this, but you can't force Israel to break up their land no. that God has given to them. You know, which is very clearly. And uh, we could go up in the rapture almost any any minute. Okay. Uh, you makes you wonder if uh, the Book of John class will ever get finished. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that that's how close I feel it is. I don't believe we're living in the last uh, days. I think we're living in the last hours. Because time is running out. And he says, if you love me, you will rejoice because I said, I am going to my father, and for my father is greater than I. He's acknowledging that his father is greater than he is. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this mean? This means unusual love and respect for his father. Amen. It's like John the Baptist said, I must decrease so he can increase. You know. And then it goes on in verse 29. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is come coming and he has nothing in me. In other words, Satan has nothing in me. Jesus Christ. No. no. Mm -hmm. uh, I was. Uh, the, the, Jesus Christ is, is the only begotten Son of God. Right. God only has one begotten Son. Uh, in verse thirty-one, but he that but but where am I at? But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father has given me commandments. So I do. Arise, let us go from here. So there, uh, would you believe that chapter 14, uh, 10 years ago, I taught this in a church. There was 
70 some people now. There was 27 ordained ministers and we stayed on this chapter for two and a half months. <laughs> That's why I was so nervous about chapter 14. But no one's asking any questions, you know, so you got a little bit quicker. <laughs> but behind that, behind that camera is people eating TV dinners and watching, yeah. and drinking coffee. And <laughs> Maybe they cook. Brother them, you know? Dave, do you have something to, to say that closes out? Sure, let me, uh... <laughs>